So this is the Asus ZenBook Pro 14 Duo OLED laptop and this is for creators and I have been using this for four weeks pretty much daily and here's like my long-term review and we're going to be going through a lot of different things so if you are thinking about buying this then this is probably the most useful video you can find of the video series that I have over here. I have a few other videos on the channel about this going more in depth kind of about the review benchmarks unboxing what's included in there so I highly recommend you check them out as well but in this video we're going to be talking about the long-term use and the two screen configuration in this laptop is it a gimmick or is it actually for creators let's find out so first of all as a creator one of the first things you will appreciate about the laptop is the design and I am a big fan of this design it looks very very slick everything is solid now even if you look at the screen flex it's there is there is no screen flex it's solid it just feels premium solid good quality laptop nothing feels cheap about it so when you get it it feels like whoa i've got a really really good tool to work with and it looks gorgeous second big thing is the performance i have the i7 12700h version so it doesn't have a discrete graphics card in there it has just the igpu or the xe graphics that's built into this 12700h processor it's got 14 cores and the benchmark video if you've seen that one showed that there is a little bit of a bottleneck in there if you really push this laptop and if you really want to get really you know using this for creative uh, works the ram is one of the bottlenecks there for sure so i highly recommend go check out the benchmark video but now when i've been using this laptop for creative purposes I've realized that actually the performance is quite impressive now obviously my workflow might not be as intensive as yours or is more intensive than yours but just in my experience what I'm doing on this channel what I'm using this laptop for Photoshop video editing Lightroom and so on it just feels very very good in terms of the performance when seeing the benchmark results and using the laptop I was expecting the laptop to be a little bit slower but actually you know creative applications it's very 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 capable especially I highly recommend you check out the Premiere Pro timeline video where I play back lots of different codecs and I didn't expect it to do that well so if you're doing 4k video editing it's completely fine here as well bear in mind for Windows laptop as well as this one here it's very important which performance mode you use from like the Windows settings and if you're on a battery or plugged in power as well balance mode performance mode and silent mode or battery saver mode basically and all of these things affect the performance of the you know PC a lot but with the performance there's also comes the question of how good is the cooling or is it adequate to cool this 14 core CPU you inside this small 14 inch uh, chassis and the answer is actually it does pretty good job depends which like fan mode you're gonna go for and yes it will thermal throttle for sure you're not gonna get the full kind of performance out of this CPU but regardless it is pretty good like with my testing using just the CPU test because that is probably the most intensive test you can do for this laptop because the it utilizes it so synthetically and so much that you won't see this in like real world performance so let's put it into the worst case scenario we can see it if i run the cinebench r23 multi-core test once i'm getting roughly around 15,000. then moving on to 10 minutes then comparing the test then and then we're losing about uh, 6.8 percent in terms of the multi-core performance so there is a little bit of a you know drawback there when running it a little bit longer you'll see a little bit of a dip in performance most of the time it doesn't really matter to for you for example if you're working on Photoshop or Lightroom you're not going to be multi-core you know threading this uh, PC for that you're using slightly threaded and it's not going to go there but when you will see this performance dip is in rendering or 3d for example if you're rendering that your scenes or video export something like that then you'll see a little bit of a dip in performance there but then we're moving on to 30 minutes doing the test there then I can see that we only uh, dropped a 6.2% so actually it's slightly less than 10% which just shows me that the 10% lets it run a little bit hot at first then the fans kick in and then it starts to optimize and kind of get the optimized cooling but in that 10 minute window it will kind of dip a little bit down further before the fans kick in and kind of stabilizes the performance but in the 30 minute mark you can see that it's just 6.2 percent so what we can say is pretty much six percent performance loss in the long term there just like important for you to know the performance stability overall 
I think is quite good and not that big of a dip in performance and it can keep it cool. So I don't think you need to worry about that too much. Moving on to the keyboard and this is something that I am a big fan here. I think the keyboard is nice and quiet. It feels very, very nice. What it does is it reminds me of my Logitech MX keys, uh, or actually MX uh, Braft keyboard. And I'm just a big fan of this. I haven't been converted to that big mechanical clicky, clicky, clicky stuff yet. So to me, this is like absolutely fantastic they're quiet very tactile very good response and because it's a little bit on the left side because the trackpad is on the right side rather than in the middle it's not a big thing at all like you'll get it used to it instantly absolutely fine to type on this the trackpad though on the right side because it's a, re a rectangular and the left and right kind of space is not as good as up or down which is interesting because your screen is actually wider you know left and right to up and down which means that you can easily go from top of the screen to very bottom of the screen when moving up and down on this trackpad but the left and right you can go like maybe three quarters of the screen which you have to do like two swipes to go from one side to the other side so it's a little bit that but I do like those dedicated buttons on the very bottom there a lot because often what you do is use just like your thumb is there and then you just go click and click and click and click. I do wish it was a little bit bigger, but I wouldn't want the compromise of making the laptop actually bigger. So I think it's all right, but just something to get used to. I do want to say that if you are left handed, it could be very awkward getting this laptop. And this could be the one thing that will put you off getting this laptop. Now the speakers inside this laptop. And this is actually something that I wish I could show you. And you really need to go try to go to the shop to really test those speakers because uh, there's no point of me making like a microphone test for you because it absolutely wrecks the experience. It, it's not the same as you actually going to listen to this, but they're very, very good. Like there's a lot of depth and richness to the sound. They're Dolby Atmos rated as well. They're downwards firing speakers. So if you have it on a table, you'll get very good experience there they go very loud as well I have never used it at like full volume because it's just too loud for me I've always used it for like I don't know 50 40 percent of volume and that's like plenty to even watch a movie or to whatever you want to do one thing I do want to mention though is if you're using the laptop on your lap for example or when you're sitting on a sofa or on a chair it's on your lap and when you're using the speakers you're gonna lose a lot of volume just because it's not bouncing off the table anymore but it's just gonna get like submerged into your lap or into your clothes now let's talk about the screens and the second screen um first of all the screen orientation and screen kind of layout it's fantastic i think this is the best thing about this laptop and i think this is the kind of key thing for you if you're gonna like this you're gonna buy this laptop or this the larger version of this the 16 inch version of this as well just because this just takes your creativity or the multitask ability to another level on a laptop. You can have as much software configuration to give you more, you know, screen real estate, but having two screens is a completely different thing. I am a big, big fan of having two screens i'm constantly like looking or i need to look at two things at the same time the secondary screen does make a big difference it's fantastic to use your pen in there to use the settings or the actual dial pad on photoshop or lightroom in there it does make a big difference and it, it is it is a big thing for your workflow it does make it faster it's very helpful so i am a big big fan of this now when talking about the main screen and kind of the combo because the main screen is 120 hertz oled screen the oled colors are very very good as well the 120 hertz that's the only bit that kind of makes me wonder, this is a bit of a too much of a spec for creators because I don't see how creators can utilize the 120 hertz screen because it's only kind of useful for gaming. But what creators do, video editing, photo editing, 3 2D design, which this is really marketed for, the 120 hertz for, you know, OLED screen is really a little bit of a marketing thing. And I know you can switch it to 60 hertz on the settings here, but why put it 120 hertz i'm paying for something that i'm really not using i'd like to know if any of you use it i know the actual experience is very nice and smooth and you know i can see that but it's a big hit on the battery life and it's not adaptive that's my biggest drawback of this now the new apple's screen on the m1 you know max and uh, pro devices they have a um, adaptive refresh rate which means that if you're not using the screen a lot or it can actually just take the refresh rate all the way down to just one hertz to save battery life 
I wish we had this in here because to me that 120 hertz OLED is a big battery waste uh, for what this laptop is created for. 60 hertz would be completely fine but adaptive would be even better just to give you the best battery life and the smoothest experience. Another good side about these uh, screens is that both of them are touchscreen which for creators I think it's, it's, it's a good thing because you can use the pen that comes with it and I'm glad it comes with it because I don't think a lot of people would buy it extra but because it's given to you you will find using it a little bit more because it's just helpful or 2D work if you're doing Illustrator or something like that this pen will be very very helpful and the touch screens just make it faster if you just want to point something or drag something with your finger it just makes the um, interaction with your content much faster and I like that I think every creator laptop should be touch screen because it just adds quite a lot some other kind of downsides are just some things you need to know about these screens when using this first of all I wish there was a way to actually hide this kind of side menu on this uh, bar because often for example when I'm um, having this window over here if I'm snapping it all the way to the left it actually hides everything that's behind it and I can't touch it because if I move my cursor over it just goes on this kind of side bar which is above everything it's just, just like a light layer over there i wish there was like a quick button how i can just hide it or get rid of it maybe there is i haven't found it yet second thing is the screen color accuracy and hdrness of, of this oled screen basically what happened is that after a windows update uh, i came back and all the colors of the main screen were completely like off it looked like washed out stuff and, and it was all over the place, which is a little bit uh, shame to me because whatever Asus did on the factory to give me the best performance, you know, of the screen and so on, Windows kind of messed it up and I haven't been able to just get it back exactly the same. I'd probably have to get some kind of screen uh, calibration tool to really get it back to that thing, but I'm just a little bit annoyed that like just the Windows update just messed it all up and just the screen. The colors don't look the same to me. The previous it was very vibrant and punchy kind of colors and I was like wow that's amazing how it looks but now just they look a little bit more dim and I can't adjust the contrast that much, the saturation, it just doesn't look the same. So whenever you get a Windows update just you know look out for that and you might want to get a, a screen calibration tool to really get all the advantage of this OLED to you know because it's a all the technology you want all these vibrant colors and good contrast ratio and all that so i'm a little bit annoyed that that worked for me you might have noticed that my laptop is on a weird angle and this is one of the things that is absolutely amazing amazing thing here on the bottom of the laptop you have these things if you haven't seen my uh, unboxing video you have these kind of sticker stand type of things that you can just basically pull out pull this lever up and it just adds a different angle to your laptop honestly they make such a big difference not just because your laptop gets better cooling now and your performance is going to be better and quieter and so on but when you are using this this is a much better viewing angle if this was down the secondary screen is not in an optimal angle for you or at least for me and it's a little bit more glare but just because this raises it a little bit I can see the secondary screen a little bit better the typing experience is better because it's a better angle it just all makes it a lot better I have been using these like every single day. It's a fantastic thing. And if you get these with a laptop, definitely install them because even if you don't use them, it's very easy to go back. They're magnetic. They don't like flip out and it doesn't add anything else or it doesn't take anything away by installing these. But if you're using them on the desk, it's a big, big thing. And I'm enjoying this a lot. So the Asus pen that comes with the laptop, first of all, big fan that it comes with the laptop. You will use it be just because it's included. A few things you need to know about this though. If you want the best experience, well, look at that, this now. My side, it's gone now. I don't know what did I do, but it's gone. Can you see the side overlay kind of menu here? It's gone and I don't know where it is now. But this pen, to get the best performance, you really need to switch the laptop to the best performance because when you have it on a balanced or even battery saver, you're gonna find that the lag between the actual, you know, moving or the input between the pen and the screen will be a little bit annoying and it's not instant and it's gonna annoy you and you just can't use it. It's unusable uh, to me. You only have to use it on best performance and then you can see very, very, you know, good kind of interaction with the pen. I do wish there was some kind of storage way for this pen because 
it's often like you know loose everywhere i wish you, it kind of slid into something on the laptop or would magnetically connect somewhere very uh, easily or there was some kind of storage for this the ports of the laptop I've got no complaints apart from the SD card slot. Now, it has a micro SD card slot, and I think it's better than having no SD card slot, but a full-size SD card slot would be much better because I think a lot of people would use it much, much more. But I understand why they didn't have it because the full-size SD card slot will take a lot of internal space, and just to have in this form factor, they would have had to make the laptop thicker or bigger, so that's why it's SD card slot. But at the same time, if we are looking at Apple, macbook pro 13 or oh sorry 14 inch it's got an sd card reader uhs two speeds so it is possible the fan noise of this laptop it's there it's not bad um if you have it like you know balance mode or performance mode i think for this form factor for what they are i'm not complaining but it is there one of the biggest downsides about this laptop is the expandability now it could take this laptop to another level if you could upgrade the ram or have a secondary m.2 ssd slot in there you really have to think about what your workflow is going to be like and really configure it out of the factory which is a little bit of a downside for me when talking about the mic and webcam they're okay here's an example this is what a webcam looks like and what it sounds like when using the webcam so you can hear the microphones and that bear in mind this is pretty much perfect lighting condition anything worse and it's going to look even worse i wouldn't shoot any of your content with this webcam but just for windows hello it's super helpful and for just conference calls quickly you know if you need a camera and you don't want to carry anything around it's okay, but it's definitely not anything amazing. And then the battery life. Now, this is one of the things that I think could be improved a lot more with this laptop. And I wish it was a little bit better because I find myself just even browsing the web and doing, you know, online stuff when having the screens on, I think it's the OLED and 120 Hertz and the secondary screen. Honestly, after a few hours, even after an hour use, there's quite a big chunk of, uh, you know, battery gone. And whatever you're doing with this, you really need to bring the brick with you. You can't really expect to have super long battery life with this, at least in my experience. I'm often charging this up again. I'm like, whoa, 19% already. I uh, need to charge it up again. And I think if we had adaptive refresh rate for these screens, it would be completely another league uh, of battery life. Basically, what I'm saying is it's no MacBook for the battery life, but for the performance it uh, you know, offers you, it's okay, but nothing amazing. So that's the conclusion of the laptop. Hopefully this was helpful for you. If you do have any other questions, I'll try to answer them in the comment section below. By the way, if you do want to buy this laptop, I'm going to leave the link in the description below where you can uh, get this. Is this for creators then? I do think this is for creators. Overall, generally, these two screens, they have thought about this. It's a fantastic feature. Overall, this truly is for creators, mostly for photo editing, 4K edit video editing, simple stuff is okay as well, especially if you using mirrorless camera codecs because the media engines inside are very very good as well to play all this back there's two media engines inside the cpu which is very uh, very good so if you're doing like you know illustrator 2d work it's a great laptop for you and i can't wait to see where asus is going to take this next to improve the battery life the ports and i'm hoping hoping to get hands on the 16 inch model which would have better cooling more performance bigger battery life who i can't wait to uh, get my hands on that i'll leave the laptop in the description below and check out the other uh, videos of this laptop if you haven't seen them yet thanks guys for watching adios and if you haven't subscribed yet my friends then why don't you do that you don't have to but if you like the content just subscribe because the videos will come to you a bit easier okay see you soon bye bye